Five members of Katarina's family were killed. Our job was to document a war crime, to find a war crime. And one of the, the first things that we decided to do was to go to the Bucha Moor. The town of Bucha was a shocking scene of violence against civilians and would change the world's view of war crimes in Ukraine. Russian soldiers killed my husband. They came across Tanya. Her husband had been kidnapped weeks before and killed, and she did not know why. What do you do with that suffering? I wanted to create a space where those stories would accumulate and we could see the patterns and the scale of what was happening. Hey, Jeff. We're good. We just crossed the border. Keenitz was part of a team of reporters from Frontline and the Associated Press focusing on war crimes. All of this human suffering would appear one day and disappear the next under the next wave of news. But what happens next? We started cataloging the daily attacks, both using our first-hand reporting and online information like satellite data and social media posts. We got a real breakthrough, which came in the form of 80,000 CCTV videos and 2,000 intercepted phone calls from around Bucha. We know that on March 4th, this group of nine guys are escorted across the street from number 31 Yablonska to 144 Yablonska at gunpoint. Torture and killing at 144 Yablonska would become the main focus for Ukraine's war crimes prosecutors. Here was eight bodies. It provided an incredible investigative tool for us to actually give a little bit more explanation for the viewer as to really what happened. What we were looking at was actually a cleansing operation unfolding in real time on video. The truth is that there's no such thing as a slam dunk when it comes down to war crimes and international law. The evidence that we collected did end up having some kind of an accountability impact. 